trying to get you or the board? Both, sort okay. of. Okay. At least I'll get audio, if not the best video. Yeah. That looks pretty good right there. All right. Alright guys, so hopefully uh, you actually got something out of that. At the very least, we all got a little exercise. So um, I do want to get now into chapter two. So a quick word about chapter one. I actually do a lot more in chapter one than some of my colleagues. You go right into chapter two, but I want you guys to realize what it is that I expect you to know. And if you don't know it or have forgotten it, it tells you what you need to go soon and get help with catch back up on. So you can always go back to specific sections in chapter one that you had the most trouble with and get some help with the tutors in the tutoring center if you need to or come see me. Right? But you need to have that stuff pretty well down or else everything else is just going to collapse. You need to have that stuff in there. Okay. So, yeah. Let me actually just try to give you guys a problem to work on. Let's see how we do it. See what you guys know. Well, let's see. Maybe not. What's that? 15? Yeah. Okay. Since you asked so nice, real quick little thing left over from the chapter test. 15 says reduce. 585. Now, the mistake people make on this problem is they think they're supposed to be able to do it in one step, which really sometimes is just crazy. You do what you can, and then you keep doing what you can, right? What's the most obvious thing that should be able to go into both of these? Five. Because they end in five or zero. Do you guys do stuff like uh, if you add up the digits in a number and it adds to nine, yeah. you can divide it by nine? Mm -hmm. Fewer and fewer people know this. If the last two digits of any number is divisible by four, the whole damn thing is divisible by four. That's neat, right? Those kinds of like one zero zero one two nine one four seven two four. The last two digits are divisible by four, so the whole damn thing is. These are things that people are starting to lose touch with as they start teaching more and more calculator, less and less memorization, which really kind of sucks. But oh well, too bad for us. So you guys are right. You can divide by five. So you divide both of them by five, and what do you get? Now, do you think anything else goes in there? No. Now, what did I just say, though? Let's see if we can check. Let's just try it out. One plus one is two plus seven is nine. So nine goes into this, right? No. But does uh, three or nine go into this, maybe? No. No. The last two digits don't add up to nine. Well, the, the whole thing's got to add to 9 to be divisible by 9. Well, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, so it adds up to 7. So that's the lowest possible. So this is probably in lowest terms. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. that what you guys got? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that 117 looks really iffy, but it's interesting. It actually is divisible by 9. You, would, you might think yeah, that would be prime. Yeah. yeah. But it is divisible by 9. I tried <laughs> Yeah, but there's nothing these guys have in common. You get a fraction. So that's pretty much it right there. Okay. Sweet. Okay. So let me give you guys a problem to try. Thank you. No problem. <coughs> that is what I'm here for. Let me start us off nice. Yeah, will you tell us when we need to take notes in a chapter? Not really. Is I won't tell you. 4x or is that 4 times? 4x, four four sorry. Okay. I'll okay. never use the x symbol for times except wow. in okay. something like scientific notation. Everywhere else it means variable. So are we, like we supposed to just let you know whether or not it, it's true or false? Three X plus two. Two thirds? Sorry, two I should probably give you some directions. <laughs> two thirds? Three X plus two? Alright, we got two thirds. 
Anybody else have a negative eight thirds? Okay. Well, let's see now. Let's see what comes out. Right. Now, what are the things I'm going to do to solve this? What's the main idea? Get x by itself. I love it. So your goal is always x equals something. So x is on one side, numbers on the other. This is stuff you've heard a lot. The things that we do, they make a big deal out of it, and they're important. Like the additive property of equality. If I add something to both sides or subtract, it maintains the equality, right? 7 equals 7, add 3 to both sides, 10 equals 10. Ooh, that's amazing. But it's good to know why we're allowed to do it. It's an equation. So I'm allowed to do anything that keeps it balanced. Can I multiply both sides by 0? No. That would be great. Good. Every single problem is zero to zero. <laughs> but it tell you, doesn't tell you a damn thing about x. It's so good. Oh, Jesus. So what's the first thing I could do here? All right. So somebody says, now be careful. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. You almost always divide last. If you divide now, you get a bunch of fractions, which technically you should be able to do. But why do that to yourself if you don't have to? That's why you almost always divide last. Mm -hmm. Almost always. I'm going to cover my ass. Sometimes you don't. Almost always divide last. Somebody suggested to subtract the 4x. You could subtract the 7x. Right. But why did you decide to go that way? Beautiful. Keep it positive. Because negatives always throw us off. So over here it goes away. Here I get. Beautiful. Subtract 5 both sides. Right? To kill that 5. So here you get. So here now is the last step. Divide. It's almost always divide last. Divide by 3. Negative 8 thirds. Cool. Oh, yeah. That was negative. So right there, yeah. yeah. But that's the kind of problem where you wouldn't lose a lot of points because at least you know how to attack the problem. Yeah. Now, you make a little mistake like that, you're going to lose like a point or something, but nothing major. Okay. That's why it's so important to show me work. If you just have an answer, it's wrong, you're going to lose all the points. I don't know what the hell you did. Show me the work, you do everything right except one little thing, you're going to barely lose any points. So we start with the minus. Start with the minus? Yes. Now, again, did anybody subtract 7x over this way? And then you ended up with 8 equals negative 3x. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you still end up with negative 8 thirds at right. the end. Well, we just chose to go that way because I'm allowed to and because it keeps it positive. It doesn't matter. Whichever way you want to go, great. Yeah. As long as at the end you get the right answer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, that's actually a few levels up from where the book starts. And that should be about where we are at least with solving the equation. Let me give you a little more difficult one. So again, solve. Uh, let's see. Let's do something. Negative 12. 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 Negative 
So right there, there's a big place people make a mistake. They get that 3 in there and they forget that it's negative 3 that you have to bring through, right? Okay, so be careful. You should have a plus, not a minus there. Also, the whole thing gets changed around. Negative. Cool? Yeah. Equals, now what happens? Plus 2 Plus 4. Plus square. You gotta be careful now. Am I foiling up there? No. What's the only thing multiplying on this side? The 2 and the other side. So you don't foil this through, do you? What's missing that would make me do that? If I put this whole thing in parentheses, right? Right now, only the 2 is being multiplied. So be real careful about that. Suddenly you make a much harder equation when you have squares running around in there. Don't do that when you don't have to. So 4 Alright, beautiful, I love it. So it's not unsolvable. You get the answer. The answer is sometimes there ain't no damn answer. So you gotta allow for that. So you gotta interpret what the hell it means when the variables go away. And you gotta let the variables go away, right? So let's let's get there first. What I hate though is I see a lot of this. I see people doing this. Do you see what they thought? But you only do that kind of thing to both sides <coughs> of the equation. Yeah. So you're adding them. Exactly. It's 4m minus 12m plus 4m plus 4. No solution. Yeah. Right? If I do go to the next step, the next step I can get my m's together. I always see this. This is interesting. I always see this. Whoa. And I'm like, how in the world is that guy still there? You can see why people people Whoa. desperately want to hold on to the variables. It's funny. We hate them, and they were like, don't go away. <laughs> right? If it wants to go away, let it, because then it's easy. The answer here, what was the answer here? Negative 8 thirds. What does that really mean? When this is true, this is true, right? When x is this, then this must be true. So when this is true, this is true. Is this ever true? No. So can this ever work? No. So like you guys said, no solution. Or if you guys want to, the empty set. You guys ever saw that before? Yeah. Empty set, no solution. What I love is when people stop there and just circle it. Like, I have now proven that negative 12 is 4. So I owe you 12 bucks. You actually owe me 4. <laughs> that would be great. There would. But it ain't working that way, sorry. If my answer is, uh, the result is zero. Is yeah, if you zero. went one more step, if you it's added 12, yeah. if you zero. added 12, you get zero equals 16? Yeah. yeah. Still, it's never true. No. So no matter what you do from this point, it's still going to be no, no solution, right? Okay. Once the variables go away, it's either no solution. What would make it all real numbers as the answer? Uh, if I had negative 12 equals negative 12, equals negative 12. Negative 12 because then it's always true, right? Are you guys cool with that? Yep. Okay, so math, one thing is right here, why does math give me this bogus thing? Because we started with a bogus equation. So math says, okay, you want to have a bogus equation? Here's a bogus answer. Nah, nah. So we got to come in and interpret what that means. Math is trying to tell me, this is all crap. No solution. That can't be done. And I can make a very easy one. X equals X plus 1. Without doing any algebra, can you tell me why that can't be true? Is there any number? Yeah. Is there any number that's equal to that number plus 1? Of course not. So if I do the algebra, I get a bogus solution, which tells me there's no solution. It was bogus to start with. Cool. Okay. Are you guys doing okay so far? Okay. Okay. All right, let me give us the next level up here. Oh, joy, Jeff. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I say. Killing me. Now, be careful. Cross multiplication can only happen. When? Here I need an LCD to go from there. I can only cross multiply when I have one fraction equals one fraction. Here there's just too many. Where do I cross?